Everyone wants to pull off the smooth moves in Valorant and really seal the deal on a round with a crazy play. Well, here are 10 tricks so good that Sage on your team might just ask you to duo queue later on. Okay, so this is one of my favorite chamber tricks, and I can't remember who I saw do this first, but in this case, we're gonna be watching 100 Thieves Stellar use this trick. He's holding the A site by himself, and we can see that TSM hitting the A site through both long and short. And they're gonna force Stellar off this angle, though we're gonna see him have to teleport. And, you know, the, the standard idea is as the chamber teleports out, a lot of the time, they're gonna end up teleporting into heaven. Maybe they're gonna teleport somewhere into B-Link. They're gonna basically be out of the site. And that's essentially what TSM thinks happened. However, as we can see, Chambers Teleport is actually on this other double box back by the door, and it's the perfect angle to see over the smokes that are standardly placed by the attackers. So right there, we see Stellar get a kill on somebody peeking out from a short because the double box angle is the perfect angle to counter the smoke that is placed to block off people coming from spawn of the defenders. And this particular trick is just really cool because it's like thinking one move ahead. You know, the standard play is just to teleport out when you get pressured, but what if you could put that teleport somewhere that gives you some value still? And what if you could use that value to counter a play that you know is going to happen and use that to surprise somebody to get a free kill? And so this idea has now been used on the C site as well. I'd mostly only seen teams use it on the A site, but this one by Zeta Division was very cool. We can see that Laz is holding the operator angle down C long and he gets a pick and then he's going to teleport out. Now look at the smoke that's coming down from the Astra for the attackers. This is a pretty standard smoke for the attackers to place, but look at the angle that Laz has. He's over the smoke. He's already on the site. He has some control and if people swing out towards the garage side of things, they often do, they're gonna get popped as we see him do right there. So this is something that I think is sort of the next evolution of chamber play where you can not only, you know, get a pick and get out safely with your teleport, but how can you utilize that teleport to give you another incredibly strong angle that counters the standard utility that's coming from the other team. Now, I really love this play because it showcases that pro players are not just great aimers, but actually think about the game at a very high level and understand its mechanics. So watch as Omen places this defensive smoke to block off the entrance from Garage, and he wants to check to see if anybody has snuck up and hidden behind the box on the far side of the entrance. He's gonna do that by walking into his smoke. Now, you have to be careful when you walk into a smoke in Valorant because the gun barrel extends past your player model, and sometimes it can actually poke through the edge of the smoke or around a corner and give away your position, allowing the other team to shoot you. So watch as Mako approaches the edge of the smoke. He's actually gonna look down as he checks the corner, which changes the position of his gun so that it doesn't poke through the edge of the smoke. And this allows him to get some very important information and retreat without being discovered. As far as agents go in Valorant, I think Raze is one of the coolest ones because for a utility allows for so many cool combos and high skill plays to be made. Now I want you to watch how Starkso handles this situation. We can see two players are in hookah, one of them has a judge, and the corners need to be cleared to make this entrance not a disaster. And first, Ascend is going to start by throwing a Skydog in, which gets dealt with from the right side. And you can see that it was actually a third player who dealt with that to try and disguise the two players that are still here here. Now that's a little bit suspicious and Starkso is going to try and clear the left side by throwing a grenade. He's going to bank it off the back wall and then he's going to throw a satchel there which is going to stop the player who's trying to get out of the way of the grenade, push him back into the grenade as it splits and clears out the left side of Hookah for free without having to risk anybody actually going in. And speaking of awesome satchel plays by Raze, I have to show you this one because it's so satisfying to watch. We're gonna see a double blast pack showstopper attempted entry by Guild, but a perfectly timed satchel from the defending Raze shuts down the flying momentum of Guild's player. And this causes them to now have to kind of trickle onto the site without having any map control in the remaining seconds of the round. And they get absolutely shredded as they drop down one at a time. And and it ends up being a great example of how a tiny piece of utility can completely change the course of a round. 
And if that's still not enough raised plays for you, I have another one to show from the young stud Alfier for Fnatic. He's going to stall out this plant so well with raised utility. Watch as he first kills the planter with a showstopper without having to risk himself. Then as the next planter goes in, he's gonna throw one satchel and then uh oh, couple seconds left. A second satchel is going to cancel out the plant, winning the round for Fnatic in that very tough retake. Time to give a little love to any smoke players out there with this cool Viper trick, which is going to be very useful for a fast round like this. We're gonna see a Skybird thrown down B long to try and detect if anybody is pushing this angle. And in response to that, we're gonna see the attackers throw up a Viper orb, which not only stopped everybody from being blinded, but also denies the information to the defending sky and allows them to potentially get up into a much more advanced position and rush and overwhelm the defenders in B long. I love creative utility usage, especially with an agent like Viper. So watch how Team Liquid is going to deal with this Viper ultimate placed by Sentinels on the attack. They need to push in to defuse the spike and hopefully kill the Viper. So watch as Nevera pops his ultimate and Yampy uses the expansion of his teammate's Viper ultimate to surprise the attacking Viper in their ultimate. And because of how the Viper ult expands, you can kind of use it as a moving smoke up until the point it reaches the max range. And that is a very cool way to deal with the other team's Viper ultimate. Now, as far as cool utility usage goes, this might be my favorite play of all time because it uses Astral Ultimate in the most creative way possible. You can see that crew is rushing onto the site and about to plant and Guild only has two players here. So their main goal is to kind of just delay the plant and maybe do a little bit of damage. So why would they place an Astral Ult that actually protects the spike planter from being shot? As the spike starts to go down, a star is placed on the other side of the ultimate and the spike planter gets gunned down before they can get back to safety, delaying the plant and allowing more rotations to come in. And the key part of this play is the placement of the Astro ultimate, which gives a tiny sliver of the site to be planted on, which baits the attackers into planting exactly there, which makes it very easy for Astro to place her gravity well star and pull them through the wall to get absolutely murdered. So one of kind of the original tricks in Valorant was the double updraft blade storm kill to start a round. And we're gonna see that being done by Depp from Zeta Division here. You know, there's still some new angles that people are figuring out, but for the most part, people kind of understand how this works and that's made it a lot harder to use because it makes a lot of noise. When you use the updraft, it's very easy for the other team to kind of understand what's happening and hide from the jet. And that brings us to the second layer of this trick. In this round, we're gonna hop on board with Yugi, who's playing jet on focus. And we're gonna notice something. He's way up in the air when the round starts. And that's because he used both updrafts to start the round elevated and hovering. And this disguises that noise because obviously when the barrier is up, you can't hear what the other team is doing. So it's gonna make a little bit of noise obviously from the hovering, but it's gonna disguise a huge part of where he is. Okay, so this next trick is a little bit more of a meme than a trick, but it is kind of a stylish way to end a round. So basically you can see DRX is gonna win this round. They have four players against one. And so Buzz is currently using the Tour de Force. He's holding this angle, waiting for Xiao to swing into a spawn and he's gonna actually miss the shot. Now, as an opper, once you miss that first shot, re-peaking is probably the most dangerous part of your round, but I want you to watch how Buzz handles this. So he's gonna give a couple of little peeks here. He gives a shoulder peek. Uh, a wider peak and then he's gonna give a shoulder peak here and now he realizes okay he's holding this angle he's going for the one tap when I try to swing out and hit him with the tour de force so instead of swinging out Buzz is gonna do something a little different and go ahead and throw his shorty out into the middle of the open area and while it does not distract Xiao's crosshair it does seem to give Xiao a little bit of a sense that maybe he's not gonna swing again this guy's trolling me he's just throwing weapons and you know the teammates from behind are probably gonna come in and get the kill so Xiao actually unscopes, he starts to move back towards the A site, and at that exact moment, Buzz is gonna swing out and hit him with a shot. Okay, so to be fair, throwing your weapons is usually kind of a meme, but I do wanna show one clip where it has sort of a creative use and 
potentially could have some value in some situations. We're gonna be watching Paper X's player Jing here as he heads up to heaven. And you'll notice that the glass has not been broken yet, but what is that? That is his classic flying out and breaking the glass. So I didn't know you could do this until I saw this particular play. And I was thinking, you know, what value could this have? And the main things that I think is that it sort of disguises what weapon you're carrying to the other team since they don't hear the gunshot and they can't be like, oh, that's a vandal. And it also maybe disguises your particular location a little bit better because the, the glass could be broken from farther away using a gun, could be broken by somebody knifing it. Uh, and maybe it just sort of fakes out exactly where you are, which is obviously a pretty valuable to sound cues are such a huge part of knowing what is happening in a round. 